Hello and welcome to this video talking about power amplifier measurement with digital pre distortion DPD using key size test software called PulseWave X series measurement applications. If you are not familiar with DPD theory, please go to the link in the description box at first. There's a video talking about this part. In this video, I will demonstrate how to do BA test with DPD by using N9055EM0E XLPA application running on key side VX. VXT-PXI transceiver. This VXT-PXI transceiver integrates VXG and VSA in a PXIE module. As we can see, it does not need a LAN connection between SA and SG. It uses internal trigger and the reference as the default. It is easy for you to set up the tester environment. OK, now let's look at the demo. Next, let's take a look at demo of PA testing in 5G new radio. First, we are going to prepare waveform file using PulseWave signal generation desktop. Go into the 5G NR mode and set center frequency at 4.85 GHz, amplitude minus 10 dBm. In order to get fast PA measurement, enable user-defined sample rate, but maintain oversampling ratio equals 1 here, and set number of radio frames to 1, subframe number to 1. Then in carrier settings, select on link and pick predefined test model 1.1, 100 MHz, 13K SCS. Generate the waveform and export it. Now switch to VXT transceiver XF screen, going to the power amplifier measurement. In signal generator, set frequency at 4.85 GHz. We've just exported the waveform, so we'll select that one. Next, set up the measurement standard we use. Choose 5G NR, downlink, and 100 MHz. After source configuration, we can config analyzer's part. Set center frequency. Next, set up the amplifier output and the gain. To set the power level, we set the power control mode to PA output, and the PA measurement will automatically start. Let's look at the demodulated NR 5G signal EVM at first. Switch to 5G NR mode. Set the center frequency at 4.85 GHz, and the measurement standard to downlink test model 1.1. Set measurement time to 1 subframe. Now we can see the constellation diagram is clean for QPSK with EVM 0.29. The 5G NR signal is demodulated correctly. Go back to the power amplifier measurement. Actually, the setup we have in 5G NR mode can be coupled in PA mode. So once you couple the setting, you can make the same EVM measurement inside the PA mode. As we set PA output is minus 10 dBm, it is in the linear region as showing AM AM graph. ACP looks pretty clean. ACPR is close to minus 52 dB. Now increase the PA output power to 7 dBm. Make sure power civil is enabled here. This built-in power civil will automatically adjust in PA output power to be target power within specified tolerance without using any external program. From AMM graph, it's in nonlinear region. Now we have a little bit worse ACP with increased noise level in adjacent channel, and EVM get worse. Now we are ready to enable DPD. DPD model is extracted, and VXT is now generating pre-distorted waveform. Now you can see the EVM is improved, but no improvement of ACP. Why does this happen? This is due to DPD only take effect on active bandwidth, not in adjacent channels. So. In order to solve this problem, we need to generate the waveform by oversampling to cover third order distortion bandwidth. So, let's go back to the PulseWave signal generation software. Let us change sample rate, multiply base sample rate times 3, so that gives us a wide bandwidth coverage. And also, we look at CCDF curve. The peak power is 11 dBm. It is a little bit too high. So we enable crest factor reduction method to reduce the peak power and set target PAPR to 8 dB. Now generate the signal. The peak power is down to 8 dB now. So we are ready to export the waveform. Now let's switch to VXT power amplifier measurement. Config source signal with new generated one. Enable DPD with DPD method memory polynomial same as before. We can see 
ACPR and EVM are both improved. ACPR is improved to minus 50.3 dB, which is pretty good. And from AMM graph, it shows PA is closer in linear region now. So from this demo, we know that the key things to make successful PA DPT measurements are oversampling baseband to cover distortion bandwidth, applying cross factor reduction method to reduce peak power and short waveform for fast measurements. In order to make test more automatically, rather than change output power on the amplitude tab manually for multiple power level tests, XAP provides power sweep function to step through power levels and measure the mode EVM at each power level point. You can set start power, stop power, and step size and other DPD limits here. Then enable power sweep. The EVM vs power measurement will start. You can get EVM vs power curve and other magic results without DPD or with DPD applied. Meanwhile, power civil function will be performed at each power step here. Attenuation will adjust range automatically at each power step as well. Next, let's take a look at DPD iteration. Before demo, let's take an overview of DPD method. The most simple and intuitive form of DPD model is lookup table. It only looks at instantaneous response, hence it's called memoryless model. However, nonlinear devices like PA don't behave consistently against power level. There are so-called memory effects that causes inconsistency depending on the past state of the power. As bandwidth gets wider, memory effect becomes more apparent. Virtual series or memory polynomial are more sophisticated forms of DPD models, which takes memory effects into account for DPD modeling. Those models are both known as as memory models. Virtual series is the most general memory model, but is computationally intensive, while memory polynomial method is focused on special cases and is more efficient. Now, let's set DPD iteration count to 3. Enable DPD iteration measurement. Accept provides DPD, ACP, and EVM results over iterations. This helps you quickly find the best iteration count, which we have exactly the parameter we can set in the PA test for the DPD modeling. Meanwhile, you can pause the measurement at any iteration step you want. So, after doing DPD iteration with different DPD method, you can find the best iteration count and DPD method for the modeling of your PA. XAP provides mark function to help you easily do this. You can quick do the peak search or the minimum peak search by the mark function. So, based on these useful functions and tests, we now set iteration count to 1 and the peak memory polynomial method is the best choice for this PA. XAP provides results display view option for you to quickly see different PA measurement metrics like ACP view, EVM view, and so on. What's more, you can create your own matrix view by adding results window with different trace data and save it under your user view section for faster results display. In summary, the XAP provides a comprehensive set of tools for demodulation and signal analysis. These tools enable you to measure and troubleshoot power amplifier in different scenarios with confidence. To learn more and to download a free trial, visit us at this website.